Most of you guys know me. I've been doing CrossFit, I realized, for five and a half years now. Um, the very first year that I started, I started coming once a week to train for a triathlon. And I came once a week and I was sore as all get out the rest of the week and I could not understand how people could come and do CrossFit more than once a week. I remember Suzanne, she would come five, six days a week and I was just like, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you do it. Lo and behold, later when I started to come more frequently, you realize it actually helps with the soreness, right? But about a year and a half after doing CrossFit and after starting to come more frequently, I remember the moment that I realized there was a mental side to this, right? Raise your hand if you know that there's a physical side and you've seen it and felt it and experienced it, right? Raise your hand, okay? Keep your hand raised if you have felt some increase in confidence strictly from the physical side of things, right? Okay, awesome. So you might have already started to dabble in the mental side of it without even realizing, right? I remember the moment I was standing on that side of the gym, I was facing this direction, and I think I was talking to Drew. I remember this just click of like, you can strategize a workout? I had no idea that you could do that, right? I just figured it was go in, try your hardest, try to survive, and then that was it, all right? Things clicked and changed a lot once I started practicing this. So I want to say first and foremost, I am not perfect at this, okay? This is something that I am still working on every single day. So you guys now from this moment forward have permission to correct me if I say a negative comment, all right? Or if something is, that I'm doing is not in line with everything that I'm saying up here today, okay? Because I want to be better and I don't always hear it. So I want you guys to help me hear it as well. And you now have permission to talk to each other about everything that you're going to hear today, all right? Um, we'll get a little bit more specific into that in a second. But uh, what I want to start with first is I want to start with this idea of focus, all right? Who listened to the video that was put out on the website on Wednesday, earlier this week? One, two, three? Only three? All right, four? Okay. Um, well, I'll share that again. That should be on the website blog as well as Facebook, and then a blog post that went out with a little bit of homework. It's okay if you didn't do it before today, all right? But this idea of focus, has anybody ever heard of Robert, uh, I say Nidifer, but I think it's Nidifer. That's how you actually say it. I just like saying Nidifer. So Robert Nidifer, has anybody ever heard of him? He was a sports psychologist in the 70s, and he came up with this theory of attention, all right, that essentially different tasks make heavier demands on different types of attention. That being said, everybody has their preferred type of attention. So if you have four different types of attention, but you prefer one, that one isn't necessarily appropriate for every scenario. Does that kind of make sense? All right. So if you have this, if you're in your broad external type of attention, you are essentially being aware of your environment, right? You're aware of things that are going on outside of your immediate person. So this could be in the middle of a workout, you're aware of what the clock says, you're aware of what somebody else is doing, you're aware of where the equipment is, you're aware of the temperature, right? Things around you. When you start to go a little bit more broad internal, that's when you start to conceptualize, you start to more generally strategize how you might do the workout or how you might respond to the stimuluses around you, okay? So that might start to be, okay, Freddie, he's on his box jump, I gotta catch up to him, now I'm gonna to start to formulate somewhat of a plan to do that, okay? When you start to move into, you're basically analyzing the data that you're receiving. When you start to go into internal narrow, this is when you start to get into real-time problem solving, all right? So Freddie's on his box jumps, I have to catch up, how am I gonna do that right now, all right? If he's breaking up his box jumps, in my head I'm gonna think, okay, I've got, I gotta get 30 unbroken box jumps to get ahead of him, all right? Narrow in external, starts to then be that exact execution of either your conceptual plan or your immediate time-solving plan. It's essentially doing a repetition, right? This starts to get a little bit more tricky, and we'll talk about ways where we can practice this particular real-time problem-solving, where you start to get this external and internal stimulus, and how you can adapt quickly so that it's, you're not always stuck in the same type of attention. You're not always stuck in one quadrant, all right? Um, in a second, we're going to talk about the why, but that essentially comes into how, right? Not everybody has, not everybody responds to the same how the same way. Does that make sense? So I can't say that when we get into this stuff, Freddie's going to respond to visual, visualization, whereas David's going to respond to self-talk, right? It comes down to you guys practicing this a little bit, all right? But right here is where you start to practice it. And again, it's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. So you have to be a little bit forgiving when that happens, 
where if you start to practice this stuff and then you start to be aware of like, oh man, the clock's ticking and uh, I, Freddie got away from me in the box jump, you just have to kind of continue to practice, bring yourself back to that internal narrow focus, all right? Um, we're going to get back to that in just a second, but what I want you guys to do first is I want you guys to stand up. You can put your pen and paper down. And I want you to put your hands in the air, really, really high in the air. And I want you to smile. Smile kind of like you mean it. As, put your hand as high as you can. You don't, you don't have to put your hand up, Julie. If you're injured, that's different, right? I want you to turn to the person next to you and smile. And then turn to the other person next to you and smile. Right? Right? Keep smiling. Keep your hands up. Now I want you to put your hands on your hips. Stand up really tall. Continue smiling. When was the last time that you stood like this in a workout? Never. Smiling. Never. Yesterday? We got one yesterday? Yeah? Yesterday? Good? Where you're standing up tall and you're smiling. You feel good? Not very often, as I said. Not very often. All right. Go ahead and have a seat. Go ahead and have a seat. <laughs> All right. So, my point, my point is, all right, what do you think comes first, action or motivation? Motivation. motivation? motivation, action, getting a little bit of both. Okay, so there's no one right answer, but I will say that action is much more immediate and motivation is intangible. We can talk about motivation all day long, which we will in a second, and that can be a super powerful tool to motivate you, like figuring out what motivates you and using that to move forward, but you can act, you're more likely to act yourself into a feeling than you are to feel your way into action, right? How many times have you guys thought about, oh man, I'm tired, it's been a long day at work, I gotta go to the gym. It's a little, it's a little easier to be like, I get to go to the gym when you get to come here, but it, every once in a while that happens, right? Where you're just like, I just don't feel it today. And then you went anyway, and then immediately, as soon as you walked in, you were like, I'm so glad I came. And you felt so much better as soon as you showed up, right? Right? Yeah. Motivation is much more intangible. Action is immediate. You can make that happen. It's very similar to this concept of fake it till you make it, right? So that second commandment that says stand tall, immediately it means a lot of different things. But for us, in particular with the workout, it means utilize your rest, okay? Your body... When you control what you're doing with your breath and when you control what you're doing with your body, you have a psychological response, okay? So the more you think about, oh, man, this is hard. Oh, that wall ball's making me out of breath. And you put the wall ball down, you come over here, and you're bent over, and you're waiting for that motivation to go back and pick up the wall ball. It's going to take a while because you're, you're in discomfort, right? Instead of being bent over and literally not being able to open your diaphragm to get breath, that's why we say, hey, stand up. Stand up, put your hands on your hips. Start breathing in through your nose so that you can get air deeper into your lungs and breathe out through your mouth. Start thinking about that, right? Now we've got you away from thinking about the wall balls, how hard they are, now we're just thinking about breathing, and that's it. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, all right, I feel a little better. I'm going to go over to the wall balls, right? You acted your way into feeling a little bit better to go back to the wall balls, all right? So just keep that in mind. Um, what I want you guys to do right now with your pen and your paper is I want you to write down one reason why you come here? Why do you come to the gym? Write down one reason. Why do you come to this gym? Now, whatever you just wrote down, I want you to ask yourself, why? Why that? Write that down. Now I want you to answer why that to whatever you just wrote down there. And it might not come super... Okay, I'm not, I'm not that deep of a person. It, like, I'm going so deep you there, might not so think deep. that. You oh, might not man. think that. But there's a, there's a deeper reason. There's a deeper reason. You can, you can do this for five minutes. Right? So this is actually something I want you to do later this weekend or next week. Is set a clock for five minutes and just do that loop. Write something down, say why. Ask yourself, well, why that? Well, why that? Well, why that? All right? It, exactly. <laughs> but you'd be surprised at how many people come in and they're like, well, I just want to be more fit. And it's like, well, why do you want to be more fit? And then it's like, well, just because I want to. And uh, sometimes it, it simply comes down to I want to look better, right? Or I want to I look good. I want to look good naked, all right? That's okay. 
all right? Every reason that you come into the gym is okay. It's legitimate for you, and it's okay to share that. It's okay to talk about that because that's what motivates you. Use that when you come into the workout when it starts to get hard, okay? Um, a lot of reasons that I've heard as well is that... Sorry, I forgot you were here, Martha. That's okay. I want to look good naked. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, <laughs> another reason that people come in is also to set a better example for their kids, to be around for their kids, right? That gets, that's more than just your workout for the day. You, that is super motivating. In a workout with 100 burpees, if you get into burpee 35 and you're like, why am I here? And then you answer yourself immediately, oh, yeah, I'm here because I want to be here for my kids. You're going to do that next rep. Absolutely, right? Um, I also want to explain a little bit about this idea of long-term versus short-term motivation and long-term, short-term why you're here, right? So we've got, probably got a little bit broad with why you were here in general at the gym, okay? So maybe not necessarily for today, but next week before you come into class, I want you to ask yourself before you get out of your car, why am I here today? What is my purpose for being here today? Sometimes it's a little bit different than that bigger goal, right? For example, if somebody's injured and if they come into the gym like, well, I want to be the fittest me possible, you got to remind yourself that because if you're injured and you just go and you push it, that's going to make the injury worse and that's not in line with that bigger goal, right? So whenever you come into the gym, right, exactly, and we've all, all of us are kind of like, yeah, yeah, I've done that, I've been to the gym and I pushed a little too much or I got in here and I was like, yeah, I want to strict press even though my wrist hurts and then it hurts worse. And then maybe you don't come to the gym the next day. Maybe you don't come into the gym for the next week. That's not in line with why you come in, right? So it's hard. It's really hard, but it's not impossible. You can absolutely practice checking your ego at the door, right? We've all been there. No, nobody in here is judging anybody else. Everybody in here is going to be super supportive. If you verbalize to the coach before class and you talk to the people that you're working out with, like, hey, man, help me be here tomorrow, keep me from doing that strict press. You know, let's, let's figure out with the coach, let's figure out if there's something else I can do where I can get a similar stimulus or something else that's going to help me with my fitness later. All right? So why are you here today? And then repeatedly ask yourself, is this in line with why I'm here long term? Right? Um, I want you to write down those two questions on your notepad because it's going to go out next week, but I want you to write that down. There's why am I here today and is this in line with my goals? I had a professor um, at SCAD that literally changed my life by telling me that every decision you make should take you closer to your goal. That is why I am still here after five and a half years and I'm in front of you guys. Right? Right? Huh? But sometimes moving towards your goals is scary, right? And that's where a lot of this stuff helps out a lot. But every decision you make, every single decision you make should take you closer to your goals. If any of you guys are fighting, like struggling with nutrition, you should be asking yourself that every time you eat something. Is this in line with my goals? Is this going to take me closer to where I want to be? Right? <laughs> so it's okay. Again, not everyone will be as effective as some other ones. Okay? Um, so in line with this focus idea, I want you guys to write down, some of you guys worked out today, some of you guys worked out yesterday, so you should be relatively able to reflect on this. And this is definitely an exercise that you can do next week. I want you to write down maybe two, three things that you thought of before you started working out, before you started working out. Maybe you were in the gym before class started. Write down like three things that maybe you thought of before you started working out. Three things, anything, regarding any, anything, whatever you were thinking about before you started working out. Two to three things. <laughs> Once you've done that, actually, yeah, we'll start there. We'll start there. Now we'll move on. One, okay, keep that in mind. We're going to come back to this. Now I want you to write down about two or three things that you've thought of in the middle of a workout. First three things that come to mind. It doesn't have to be the workout that you did yesterday. It could be any workout ever that you're like, yeah, I remember saying that to myself. Or out loud.
And then I want you to write down two or three things that you said to yourself after a workout. Uh, write down two or three things that you said to yourself after a workout. Okay, so we're going to go back to before the workout. Who wants to give me like one, two examples? Three examples. Yep. I can do it. Um, I thought about um, stretching so that I could do better. You wanted to stretch? Wanted you thought to about stretch. stretching? I was really thinking okay. about really trying to get it because I haven't been doing that. Uh-huh. So you wanted to stretch before so you could do better in the workout? Yeah. Awesome. Anybody else? Freddie? I knew we had to do Fran today, so I was like, crap. Like, that's what I was thinking about. You knew we had to do Fran, so you were like, oh, man. Crap, yeah. Man. Okay. With an eye roll and a head tilt and everything? <laughs> it's like, oh, my gosh. Look into the heavens. First one's always, I'm tired. I'm tired? Yeah. And then I need, to, and I need to do homework? Okay. Homework that you've been given to by a coach before you start class. Okay. Which one of those do you think helped their workout? Of those three examples? Stretching. Yeah. She was thinking about the workout. She was thinking about what she needed to do to better prepare herself for her performance and for her reasons for being here, right? Health and longevity, right? Um, how do you think Freddie felt while doing Fran? Probably felt like it. It felt like crap. How did you feel when you were doing Fran? Like crap. It's like crap, right? Yeah. How did you feel while you were doing your exercises, Kara? When I was stretching? Uh-huh. Excited. Excited? Good. Okay. So you went from I feel tired right. to I've now acted myself into a little bit more enthusiasm, right? Because you knew you needed to do it. And I was getting better. Awesome. Let's give me two or three examples of what you guys are thinking about in the middle of a workout. Rick, sounds like you have one. My jump ropes are better. My jump ropes are better. Awesome. I like it. I like it. I was on a roll, bam, I can do more? Yeah. I like it. Good. I was thinking about that damn lift yesterday. The damn lift? Just to get it right. I was like, I was going to get this damn lift. I was going to do it. You're going to get this damn lift. You're going to get this damn lift. I like it. Those are actually all really good positive examples. I like that. Right? You became a little bit more aware of yourself in a positive manner. How did the next set feel of jump ropes? It felt awesome. Right? Didn't. Uh, was, what was it? Back squat. Back squat. Back squat. It felt awesome. You were jump roping. Yeah. How did your next set of jump ropes feel? How did your next set of jump ropes feel? I think that was the last one. That was the last one. Good. So you finished strong, right? You finished strong. That was good. And you made that next lift, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. What about some things that you guys are saying after the workout? Give me two or three things you guys said after. Jared. What could I have done differently, okay, to be more efficient, all right? Anybody else? You're always excited after a workout? Even after all these years. Uh-huh. Anxiety. The first, as soon as three, two, one, go, my anxiety is to the roof. So I have to get through the first whatever increment is. Uh-huh. And then once I'm done with that, I'm fine. But I got to... So that's actually a really good point. Um, when we say you guys have 10 seconds and we click the remote, Whose heart rate immediately spikes? That's about half. That's more than half. Everybody's got a hand raised, right? Right? Have any of you guys, <laughs> right? I just, you guys just got excited about now, right? <laughs> Have any of you guys ever practiced trying to calm yourself down within that first 10 seconds, waiting for that three, two, and go? A couple of you guys have tried that, right? Because imagine that adrenaline rush, and then you go and you do your first like three reps, and you're like, whoa, that was a little too fast. Right? You got maybe a little too excited and then burned out and maybe didn't listen to the plan that you first conceptually created. Right? Um, and then, Jared, I want to ask you a question. When you say after a workout, you ask yourself, how could I have been better? Are you asking yourself that objectively or are you beating yourself up about how you could have been better? I'm just curious. Sometimes it's both? Huh? You're getting down on yourself a little bit. Yeah, like how could I have done that better? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Um, and the reason we're kind of talking about this, first and foremost, before we talk about all this other how with the focus, is I want you guys to become a little more aware of what you're saying to yourself before, during, and after a workout, right? You can't apply these 
if you don't know what you're applying them to, okay? So before you come into the gym, are you thinking about dinner? Are you thinking about what happened at work? Are you thinking about kids you got to go home to and take care of? Are you thinking about bath time? Thinking about I got the dogs out? Thinking about something that happened way earlier at work that doesn't immediately apply to the hour that you're here? I want you to become a little bit more aware of that. Start thinking about how can I improve the workout that I'm about to do? I need to talk to the coach so that they know that I, I don't want to press overhead today. We need to make some adjustments. How can I make better decisions to be in line with my goals for why I'm here, the reasons why I'm here. And then when you're in the middle of the workout, sometimes you get excited. We get wadhead, right? We either move away from our conceptual strategy that we created earlier, or we get excited and we step out of line with our goals, whether it's injury-related or otherwise. And then after a workout, are you beating yourself up? Are you saying, well, I should have done that better? Or are you looking at other people's times on the board? Is that in line with why you're here? Are you only here to just be number one on the board at the sake of maybe repetition quality, at the sake of your health and longevity, right? Who comes in and looks at the whiteboard every once in a while and looks for somebody else's time, right? Sometimes that's okay. Sometimes that's okay, all right? Because a little bit of health, like, totally get it. A little bit of healthy competition, you know, okay, I'm gonna go side by side with this person because that's gonna help me push a little harder. Sometimes that's okay. But how many times have you done that and maybe thought after the workout, I probably could have gone a little faster. Even if you did beat them, like besides the point, right? Have you guys thought that maybe you're limiting yourself to just that one person, right? Like, okay, well, I'll, I'll, be, I'll, I'll be happy with my workout if I beat them, right? How much faster could you be gone if you had just focused on yourself and used some of these tools that we're about to talk about and just intrinsically pushed a little harder and had, no, had nothing to do with them, Right? you might be limiting yourself. Just think about that. I'm not saying you can't do that ever, right? It does help. Just maybe not all the time. Maybe not every time, all right? So um, after a workout, I want you guys to be thinking, we'll get a little bit more into that during, because a lot of this stuff is that during a workout, how to bring yourself back to your intention, back to your goal, back to being completely present, all right? But after a workout, I challenge you to bring a pen and pad, all right, or have a notebook, have like a mental notebook that at the end of a workout, maybe before you drive home, before you start shifting focus to other things, right, when you have a little bit of quiet time, objectively ask yourself, how could that have been better? Be aware of if you're attaching emotion to it though, all right, because if you're, if you're attaching emotion to it, emotion, yeah, if you start to say, how could that have been better, and it starts to make you feel not so great. That is, that's something else. There's something underlying there. I want you guys to be asking yourself, well, okay, what could I have done strategically better for next time? And just be okay with it. Be okay with how you did today. Let's use that to move forward. And I challenge you to write down twice as many positive good things that happen than you do about things that you could have done better. Right? I got five double unders in a row. Or, you know what? Today, I was aware of how I was breathing. It doesn't have to be a quantitative thing. It can just be, you know what? I'm really proud of myself because I breathed. That's it. I focus on inhaling and exhaling. Simple. And that's literally one of the hows is, am I inhaling? Am I exhaling? Can I hear myself inhale and exhale? And am I doing it in line with every repetition, right? That is the most simple task. But imagine if that's all you're focusing on. It doesn't matter. Like, you're not thinking about how hard it is. You're just thinking, okay, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Have you guys ever had a workout where that's literally all you thought about was Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. How did that feel, JC? Uh huh. Yep, 150 wall balls. You felt happy during Karen? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just focus on inhale, exhale. Yep, that was 150 inhales and exhales that you intentionally made, right? Um, so we're going to talk about breathing a little bit more specifically later, but. Part of this being aware is there's this person inside of you that was potentially molded a little bit by society, a little bit of your experiences, a little bit of maybe some bad experiences, maybe some good experiences, that is your inner bully. It is your inner doubt. It is this person that is trying to bring you down. All right? Now, part of that awareness is to start to recognize when that person's talking to you. And then in a second, we're going to talk about all the skill where we can start to apply to no rep that inner bully and replace it with something. 
super, super powerful, okay? So in a situation where you're trying to be positive and you're trying to use a good mantra, if you say, I won't quit, what does that inner bully or what do you hear? Quit. Quit. That's the only word you hear. It's the only word that your brain hears. Quit, right? Um, This is something I've heard actually a lot in the gym is don't put the bar down. What do you hear? You hear put the bar down. Right? You might have three repetitions left. You, hear, you feel strong. You hear that one phrase and you're like, yeah, that sounds good. I want to put the bar down. Right? And you're like, no, I only have three left. Keep going. Right? Say what? I hadn't Yeah, exactly. And tell somebody might have, and they have good intentions. So this is why I'm giving you guys permission to talk to each other about this too and to take this to other athletes. Recognize that they're trying to be positive and that they're, they have good intentions, but be like, hey, man, you know, when you said that to me in the workout, all I heard was put the bar down. Next time, will you tell me to, like, keep it up? Next time, like, I want to hear your voice. Tell me to do one more rep. And they'll be like, oh, you're totally right. Absolutely. Okay? It's just a quick conversation. Right? How would you change I won't quit? Keep going. Finish. I can do this. Absolutely. Keep going. Keep doing this. Absolutely. All positive. All very short phrases, though. Keep that in mind, too. All of you guys just gave me super short phrases. It's awesome. Um, how would you change don't put the bar down? Keep the bar moving. Push, push, yeah, push. One word, one word, right? Because in the middle of a workout, when you're going, your heart rate's up, and all you can hear is your heartbeat and your breathing, and you're just like, oh, my gosh, I don't even know how many reps I have left, right? And you hear push? Okay, all right, I'll keep pushing. I'll do that. One word, right? Versus the conversation, versus me coming up, like, trying to talk to you guys about this. You know what? I can see your inner bully talking to you right now, <laughs> right? Like, that person would be like, what? I didn't even hear what you just said at all, right? Instead of just being like, push. Like, be louder than that person that's talking to them in their head, okay? Now, um, this was one that I actually heard on Thursday, and it's a little bit tricky because, again, it's trying to be positive. It says, I think I can do this one. I can do this. Yeah. Because then all your brain is going to hear, I think I can. And that's a, little, that's a little bit too much doubt, right? I can do this. It's shorter, and it's way more impactful. It's way more powerful, Right? So what about that was heavy? So this was also mentioned on Thursday. He didn't actually say it to himself. He was working with somebody with a strict press. That person did their strict press and successfully made it, put the bar in the rack, turned around and said, that was heavy. And then that guy had to go lift it. Right? Right? How does, and then he was like, oh. And he was like, oh, man, yeah, that's, that is going to be heavy. And he said he made it and he did it, which is fantastic. But he, and I asked him, how did it feel? And he said it felt heavy. Right? So... I want you guys to, to keep in mind. Yeah. People say this all the time and it bugs the crap out of me. Uh-huh. Like, don't listen to them. Uh-huh. Almost done. Almost, Almost done. done. Like, okay. Have, like, or halfway, like, even or the halfway just point. One more. Yeah. Just one just more. more. And I'm like, I don't want to talk, think about my finish. I'm, what, I'm thinking about this thing. That yeah. I'm right now awesome. Because, awesome. So, so that's an example <laughs> of, like, some things working for some people and then other methods working for others. So, like, I know for me, and I'm totally guilty of that because I know for me, if I make small goals within a bigger workout, I'm able to push it. So if you're in a 400-meter run, how many of you guys have thought about everything that you have to do when you get inside the gym? And then you slow down, right? As opposed to being like, okay, I'm running this 100-meter. I'm going to run this 100-meter. I'm going to get to this 100-meter. You're staying present, right? But every once in a while, like, for some people it works. They're like, okay. I'm over halfway. Awesome. And they just feel like they're kind of a little tired because like, oh my gosh, it's all at work. But they're like, you know what? I'm over halfway. I'm almost done. That motivates them. But if that doesn't motivate you, you're more than welcome to tell people that are cheering you on and be like, hey, this works better for me. Just know like if you work out for me, say this to me instead. And that's totally okay. The EMA, whatever day that was, was really long. And we got to the halfway point and everybody in class went, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> so, and that's an example of knowing how much work you've already done, right? So how many times have you counted in Karen where you're at 35 and in your head you're like, I've done 35 wall balls already and I have this many left to go, right? Even if you are over halfway, okay? So say you get to 100, you're like, I've done 100 wall balls and I got 50 left. Even if you're over halfway, you're thinking, I just did a lot of work. I should be tired for the next couple repetitions I'm about to do. It's okay to count by 10. Absolutely. Absolutely. Who's done um, double unders before and instead of counting up, you just count by 10? 10. 10. 10. Yep, you just do 10 at a time. You, do small, you make yourself, you give yourself small little goals that you know you can do anytime it's put in front of you. And then as soon as you're done with that one, it's put in front of you again. 
Okay, I'm gonna do this, put in front of you again. I'm gonna do this. Next thing you know, you're done with the workout. Yeah. Tiny little goals. Tiny little goals. Exactly. 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 Yeah. So part of it, part of other people's words affecting you, your words affect other people. So if you do have powerful mantras, which we'll get into in a second, if you're replacing the self-talk with positive, short, simple phrases, what's to keep you from saying your own self-talk out loud if it's positive? Say it out loud to yourself. Because just thinking it, that's, that's a level of powerful. But what if you say it out loud and you hear it and somebody else hears it as well? How much more powerful is that now? How much more effect has that positivity spread to, right? Um, how many of you guys know the, it's like the pyramid of fitness? Starts with nutrition underneath, goes up to metabolic conditioning, ends in sport, right? That's the physical side of things, all right? So, if our thoughts are the first thing, there's going to be a little bit more of a mental side to that pyramid. If our thoughts are the first thing that go through our mind, right? Obviously, I don't know that there's a whole lot else that goes through your mind other than thoughts. Um, that's the base, right? Your thoughts then become what you say out loud and what you do. So now you've gone from this is just impacting me, if my thoughts, to now I'm impacting other people, right? Words and actions. That then becomes your behavior or your habit. So the more you do those words and actions, now that's like repetitive, okay? More likely to happen again. That then becomes your character. That's six, all right? Char character. I've t sorry, my handwriting could be better. I can work on my handwriting so that it improves. With this character, this is the definition on like Webster's online dictionary. It is your moral and mental qualities of an individual. So this is now how somebody else perceives you. That's pretty big, right? Now the top is essentially yourself, you as a person. This could potentially be your best self, depending on how all that starts, right? That's big. So the more, like, why are we not more aware of what's going on in our head if we're leading to our potential best self? That could be a potential worst self too, right? Okay, so with a mantra, these are meant to be very, very powerful. And I wrote like great impact, not necessarily on somebody else. It has to have a great impact on you, all right? I have mantras, other people have mantras, their mantras might not work for me and mine not, might not work for them. This is where, this is like one of your most important homework pieces. I want you to set a five to 10 minute clock and you're gonna write down two word phrases that are positive, right? That potentially could get you to go further. Do one more rep or go a little faster, speed up, whatever it might be, okay? Imagine movement, imagine a wall ball and be like, okay, well what can I tell myself that would make me keep going? Right? And then imagine rowing. Okay, well, what can I tell myself there that would keep me going? And sometimes you might only need one mantra and that just covers everything. I have learned through experience that I have several mantras that work for different movements, different feelings, different experiences that you're having. All right? um, this takes practice. These are the words that you're going to say to yourself when you feel your focus slipping. Say you're doing Karen and you turn around and you look at the clock and you're like, why am I looking at the clock? Right? Stay, stay present. Do one more. Two words that just get you out of whatever you are about to do and get you back into what you need to do. Right? And if breathe is one, maybe you need to set the ball down. Take one step back. Breathe. Stay close is a really good one. Stay close. Stay present. Stay with this. As opposed to dropping a power clean and walking halfway around the gym, looking at what everybody else is doing, being like, cool, I'm going to get some chalk. I'm waiting for that motivation to go pick up the bar. It's not going to happen. You have to act yourself into it. I understand if it doesn't have to be an unbroken set, set the bar down, take one step back, reset physically so that your mind gets right, and then take a step forward and pick the bar up. Right? Again, some of these mantras will also help with quickly adapting and quickly changing your plan. Right? 
So when you when you guys have come to class, when have you ever like been in the warm up? I'm totally guilty of this, where you're like a little stiff and you start moving and you're like, ugh, do I really want to work out today? And we're doing inchworms and you're like, man, my hamstrings are tight. And you're just like, why is this warm up so hard, right? The warm up is kind of the suckiest part of class, but it's super important. It's super important because you are taking that <laughs> kind of <laughs> really the workout should feel way better because the workout primed you mentally to be able to shift more easily from different types of focuses. Instead of you coming in at the end of a workout or at the end of a long day of work and being like, all right, we're going to do Fran, here's your barbell, three, two, one, go. You're going to be like, oh, man, that first couple sets not going to feel great. You might feel better by the end of it because now you're warmed up, now you're ready. You are more, you're easier, you're going to be more likely and more quick to be able to change and adapt with these types of focuses if your awareness and arousal is up. Right? So I want you to view the warm-up next time as prep, as mental arousal, not just physical wake, like waking up and getting warmed up, but mental arousal. All right? um, so with these mantras, five to ten minutes is an exercise for you guys to do on your own. Two powerful words. All right? Does anybody already have a mantra that they want to share with? Yeah. Clear the mechanism. Yeah, it's like Kevin Costner baseball film. Obviously, it's Kevin Costner movie, so it has to be about baseball. <laughs> uh, and it's what I do about like 10 to maybe 15 seconds before a lift. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Especially Olympic lifts, more so than like your strength lifts. Or like I just take like a deep breath and go clear the mechanism, and I stop and think, and then I love my visualization. I try to picture a white piece of paper. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Not at all. Like, not at all. It does not. It doesn't. Piece of paper in my head. And so I stop thinking about anything all together until I touch the bar. And then once I touch the bar, the only thing I think about is just go. And there's no thought process. There's no anything else. I think every girl in here right now is like, oh, I wish I could do that. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Blank piece of paper. I wish I could think about nothing. Um, but so you just you said that and you said, I know this sounds dumb. It doesn't sound dumb. If that works for you, that could absolutely you potentially just help five, six other people do that. Right? Exactly. Exactly. And try it more than once. Because it might, first couple times it might feel a little silly. But then it becomes more natural. And we'll talk about the visualization in a second because that one tends to feel a little silly. But the more you practice it, the more you become familiar with it and comfortable. What was your question? I think I was going to ask you, because like for me, probably one of the most, um, and I don't know if it would be considered like fall under our majors or whatever, but um, I think a really good moment for me was actually being able to do a workout with a coach. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, Was a coach worked out with you at the same time? As a okay. So uh-huh. in, the, in the workout that we had, um, that it was, I think it was you and Freddie who we were on a team. Mm-hmm. Um, and at that moment, I was able to just sit back and say, holy shit, this is, this is what it's supposed to be. I mean, this is, this is giving 100% effort. Yeah. This is what that looks like. Yeah. And so it was like a yeah like you tell me if I'm hearing you correctly like you saw a little bit of like a mental clarity yeah and you wanted to know what that felt like we're very focused yeah and Fo- yes yeah, like focus absolutely down, like it was like a and it was very inspiring because those are the things that where I was stuck on the focus of coming in. I was like, oh my god, please don't like this is gonna hurt. This is, this is good. Yeah. Bike. I don't yep. Do this. And then it was like, she made it look so easy. And if I just did it, I could do it. So, uh, so I have a couple of things to say in response to that. Um, I truly believe that the things that you struggle with and the things that are hard are opportunities to understand that more. I didn't always love wall balls. I was totally guilty of walking away from the wall and being like, is there a time cap and can I walk around long enough until it hit? Right? Like, I was there. And then one day I just decided, you know what? They're not going away. And I'm not going to go away. So we got to figure this out. And there have been plenty of times where I would on purpose pick a heavier wall ball just to get like extra uncomfortable and just focus on that, practice these mantras, practice different sets, practice different methods that would work for me until... I love wall balls now. Everything that is challenging you is an opportunity for you to grow and understand it a little bit more. Understand you in that moment, right? Understand that, you know what, maybe I can't do five unbroken muscle-ups, but I can do one at a time, right? And then maybe later, I'll practice doing two in a row, 
right? I'll practice doing two touch and go clean and jerk. Or I'll do grace one time like this, and then when it comes back up, I'm gonna on purpose try it a different way, even if I'm a little slower so that I understand how that feels. And then you can kind of take that into other workouts. Okay, well there's clean and jerks. I know I've tried grace like this. Now I know that this works for me, so I'm gonna use this strategy in this workout. Again, what works for one person might not work for the other person, and not every day is a testing day. It's okay to practice this stuff, and it's okay to kind of like mess up a little bit, or get a little messy, and maybe be a little slower, but then maybe the next time you practice the same thing, it's a little faster, right? Because it's new. You didn't come in on day one and be like, yeah, I'm awesome at snatching. I got 225 pounds, right? You played with it. You practice different things. You try different cues, and then one day you're like, okay, I know this works for me, so I'm going to keep doing this because this works for me, right? I do want to distinguish there's a difference between being uncomfortable and being in pain. If you're injured and you're in pain, this is not helping you. Right? That's a conversation you need to have with a coach so we can change it, right? so we can change the stimulus that's happening. Now, being uncomfortable, being a little out of breath, being in a little bit of that like, lactic acid in your thighs on, on Karen. I know we keep coming back to Karen, but Grace, whatever, the shoulders, like 50 shoulder to overheads in a row. Being uncomfortable is a little bit different. Your mind can absolutely get the best of you unless you practice getting the better of it, being in control of it. Right? You can do 50 unbroken shoulder to overheads because you choose to, because you want to. Right? That's that. So I want to give you a couple of examples of my mantras, and I want to hear a couple of what you guys are kind of formulating in your mind. All right? If it's a really hard workout, and I showed up, when I'm doing those repetitions, I am choosing every single repetition. In my head, I say, I choose this. That way, it's not like I have to do it. I get to do it. I choose to do this. Why not own that? Right? Um, another one for me, it might sound a little counterintuitive. I used to tell myself to get comfortable on the runs because I'm not a great runner. It's something I'm working on, something I'm getting better at, right? But I would always say, get comfortable. Just get comfortable on the run. And then I was never getting better at it. I was always getting slow. I was always letting myself slide. So now I say, stay uncomfortable because that also keeps me very much so in the present. It keeps me very focused on what's happening right now. I'm not thinking about what I have later. I'm not thinking about what I'm doing or what I already did. As long as I can stay uncomfortable, then in that relative moment that I know that I'm pushing, I know that I'm trying to get intense, right? Um, sometimes when you start to practice these, so, and so another one for me um, that I really like, Greg Amundsen is a like, goal-setting guru in the CrossFit world. If you have not heard of him or looked him up, he has some super powerful things to say. His mantra actually led me to one of my favorite mantras. His mantra is breathe fire. And I practiced it, and I tried it, and I was like, that's not quite working for me. Breathe fire. So he'll breathe, and then he fires, right? Like he goes. For me, it's breathe power. So when I inhale, I think about inhale power every time I inhale. Say I'm doing clean and jerks. I've set the bar down for a second. I take one step back. Breathe in power. Now I've got all this power. I've got to use it. I want to use that next rep, right? Um, there's another one. Uh, so as you start to practice this, you'll start to notice again that different movements might need different mantras. Has anybody ever had a mantra come to them? From their own mind, not from necessarily somebody else. So, uh, I do triathlon, and when I'm out there biking, uh-huh. um, and there's a lot of people out there biking, I'm like, you were my victim when I saw somebody else. You were my victim? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you were my victim. Woo! <laughs> 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 yeah. You can apply that. You can apply that to the It pushes you to keep going. Yeah. 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 <laughs> But something that might even be more potentially powerful because that's a, it's a little bit of an external stimulus, right? Like your focus, and sometimes that works. Again, sometimes that works. But something that's maybe more um, immediately in your control is just saying, I'm in control, right? You might be using, okay, I'm going to go after them, but I'm in control of getting after them, right? Because then it's a little bit more on you. You're a little more accountable. That's a vulnerable spot to be in, accountable for your own actions instead of being like, you know what? The wild balls were hard. It was all on them today. Instead of being like, you know what? I owned that. I took control of that workout. I did everything that I wanted to do, and it went according to my plan, and it was in line with my goals, no matter what else happened with everybody else, right? Um, it's a really awesome feeling when you have a mantra come to you. Um, there, was a, there was a workout recently where it was like barbells rowing, and then there was a set of wall balls, and whatever it was, it, like, it just got me out of breath. I was super uncomfortable, and I walked over, and I immediately picked up the wall ball, and out of nowhere, I thought, I'm home, and immediately I felt comfortable, 
and I felt like my breath was back, and it threw me off guard. I was like, where'd that come from? That was weird. But now I use it, and now it feels good. And I start, like, because when you're at home, you're comfortable. You're not out of breath. You're like, yeah, I'm home. We're chilling. Got a blanket. Slug on my dog. Might be doing some wall balls, I guess, now, right? If you can practice this, it took five years for that to happen. It took four years of practicing the mental stuff for that to happen. But that's a really cool feeling that I want all of you guys to have at some point. All right? Um, uh, what are some mantras that you guys have? We've got about 12 more minutes. I want to I wanna hear about that, and then I want to go over the other two things. April, you've got one? Look like you have your hand coming up. Two words that just, like, give you goosebumps. I want it to be that powerful that it, like, changes the way your body feels. It's possible. It really is. They're there. Anybody else? Anybody else have one that, like, changes your physical state just when you hear those two words? Uh, when I was boxing, the, the call from the corner is always control the ring. Control the ring? And it, even if you are in a spot or it's, you're not where you want to be or you're not performing the way you want, controlling the ring, you can readjust your space. And you, this is your home. Your yeah. So you can do it, and it just kind of flips your switch. So if I'm it takes you out of takes you of like what is happening to me mm-hmm. to what can I do next yeah JC uh, mine's pretty generic it's just let's go but I hear go, yeah. my dad's voice because he's the one that kind of got me started yeah so then that's Yeah. It's like the pitch, you know, it's not necessarily let's go, it's how you say it in your head, how it sounds mm-hmm. in your head. The people that you care about the most are super powerful motivators, right? So there was an example that somebody mentioned one time, like, he was in a workout and he was having a tough time, and he imagined that his family was in danger. And that, like, that's kind of an intense one, right? Like, that's a big adrenaline rush, so I'm not saying use that all the time. But, like, he, that's why he was there, was for his family. So if he used that as, like, i got to keep going because this is for my family, then he's going to keep moving. Jared. That's kind of what I use to do the example. I always mm-hmm. think you're Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Are they going to see you bent over, sucking wind? or Yeah. Are they going to see you standing up and moving and choosing that next breath? Absolutely. Um, all right, so talk a little bit about mantras. Remember, set a timer for five to ten minutes. Make yourself sit there. Make yourself keep writing different words. Imagine different scenarios that might work, and then start practicing them, right? Practice what, and then find the one that gives you that physical change, okay? So part of the visualization, I really liked Wag's example. It was a little bit different than what I was imagining, but I like that. Like, he had this blank piece of paper. It took him out of himself, which sometimes is okay, right? It gets you out of your head. Sometimes you can be a little too in your head, thinking way too much about too much stuff, right? Um, Another method in particular with like Olympic lifting or with a back squat or with a a gymnastics movement even, doesn't matter what kind of repetition it is, right, is closing your eyes and imagining a successful repetition. But not just like, okay, close my eyes for two seconds and there it is, okay, got it, and then go trying it. Like set a timer for two minutes and wait until that ding. Imagine what it feels like. Say you're you're, you're going for a pull-up, all right? Imagine what it feels like to stand there, standing tall, you take a deep breath in, you take a deep breath out. What is on your body? What are you feeling? What are you wearing? Who's around you? Right? Stepping up to the pull-up rig. What do your hands feel like when you put the chalk on? What does the bar feel like in your hands? Are your thumbs wrapped around? What's going on with your body? Are you tight? Are you active? Go for a successful rep. Like you're feeling what it's going to feel like in your body. It might be challenging. you got to work for it, especially if it's a one rep max. You're going to think, okay, that's going to be it's going to be a heavy bar, but you know what? I'm powerful. I'm going to have to push through, but I'm going to push through it. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to extend my leg. I got it, right? Well, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so, so the point behind that is, is if you're imagining a successful lift, I don't want you to be caught off guard when you do have to fight for it, right? So, yes, yeah, some people are, like, you don't want to just focus on the heavy. But I also want you to be prepared for when you do have to fight. So if your mantra becomes, I fight through this, that's okay. Yeah, right? So that's going to get you, but I totally understand your point. Yeah, right? Kara? Uh, slight, I don't know, say grievance or whatever. Uh-huh. I know everyone makes fun of Sylvia at 6.15 in the morning because we're early people. We complain that the workout's posted after 9 because we get up at 5 in the morning to come here. Okay. But to go to bed at 
This is awesome. I have to work through that anxiety. Tonight, I always, whatever the workout is, I do it in my head as I fall asleep. Okay. So the last thing I see is me succeeding when I fall asleep. That's so uh, fantastic, morning, yeah. But if it's not freaking posted till now, <laughs> I can't see it. So it's like, when I, it's like, but it's hard for people to understand, but it's perfect for this. Yeah. I visualize myself doing it successfully. Yeah. Like I visualize all of it, and then I get excited, and I fall asleep in a positive way. Yeah. So just... A little bit of feedback on top of that. I like that. Yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> so um, practice the visualization. We do this when we look forward to vacation. We imagine ourselves sitting on the beach. We imagine ourselves relaxing. Why not imagine yourself working hard and succeeding at that repetition or at that workout, right? Um, I, love that it's, I love that it's not just one rep you go through. I love that you go through the whole workout. I think that's fantastic. That's fantastic. It's, it takes practice. It absolutely takes practice to do that. And when you first do it the first couple times, I challenge you to kind of slow down the next time you do it. Because most likely what's happening is you're going to go a little fast. So just slow down with it. Slow down. Feel like everything in that visualization, not just what you're going to do, but what's around you, all of that. Because by the time I get to the workout, if I'm able to do that, mm -hmm. what I hear is whatever you or Drew or whatever coach I've had in the past tell me mm -hmm. during certain things that I've struggled on, I can hear that voice, like you said. Yeah. I can hear that and put you Yep. Absolutely. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to put your pen and paper down. You're going to stay seated, but I want you to ground your heels down to the floor, okay? Ground your heels into the floor. It's relatively early in the morning, so I want you to put your palms face up, all right? This is representative of being open to some energy, being open to some power, okay? I want you to sit up really tall, pull your shoulders back, but I want you to be comfortable. You're going to close your eyes. We're going to do a couple different exercises, all right? First, when we inhale, we're going to inhale and expand through our gut, right, through your belly. I don't care what you look like today. Nobody else cares. Everybody else's eyes closed, so it doesn't matter. I want you to try to make your stomach as big as you can when you put in air to the bottom of your lungs. When we exhale, you're going to try to squeeze your belly button as tight as you can into your spine, all right? We're going to do this to a four count in, holding for a second, a four count out, holding for a second. So right now I want you to just take a normal breath, normal inhale, fill your lungs up all the way, and I want you to take a normal exhale, I want you to get all the air out, and we're going to inhale for one, two, three, four, hold, exhale, two, three, four, hold, inhale, just through your stomach, expand your belly, four, hold, Exhale, two, three, four. Hold, inhale, two, three, four. Hold, exhale, two, three, four. One more. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, exhale, two, three, four. All right, I want you to breathe normal. This time I want you to put a hand on one side of your ribs. Okay, you can do both, but I prefer just one. That way you can kind of still inhale. This time I want you to be very conscientious. Are you inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your mouth? And this time when we inhale, instead of going into our belly, we're going to try to expand through the back of our ribs, through the side of our ribs, and through the front of our ribs. All right, so you're going to the middle section of your lungs. So your hands on your ribs to feel that expansion. Okay, same count. We're going to go for four breaths. Take a normal inhale. Everybody, normal inhale. Fill up all your lungs. Your eyes are still closed. We're taking a normal exhale. Get all the air out. And we're going to inhale for a one, two, three, four. Hold. Exhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Inhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Exhale. Two, three, four, hold, inhale, through those ribs, expand through the back, four, hold, exhale, two, three, four, we got one more, inhale, two, three, four, hold, and exhale, two, three, four, breathe normal, all right, this time I want you to put your hand on your chest. 
All right? This time, you're only allowed to inhale up through your collarbone. Okay? You're trying to lift up. Same count, same number of repetitions. Take a normal breath in. Close your eyes again. you got one palm at least face up on your knees. Normal inhale. Exhale all your air out. You're going to inhale upwards for two, three, four. Hold. Exhale. Two, three, four. Inhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Exhale. Two, three, four. Inhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Exhale. Two, three, four. One more. Inhale. Two, three, four. Hold. Exhale. Two, three, four. Breathe normal. We've got one more exercise, but I'm curious which one of those felt the best to you personally. Jared says belly, ribs, chest. We got a little bit of combination of each, all right? What we're going to do in a second is we're going to fill your entire lungs now, starting with your belly, through your ribs, and then ending with your collarbone. Because I would argue that when you only shallow breathe through your collarbone, you have a physiological response and a psychological response of panic, right? That tends to happen when we get in a workout. So we get so caught up into it, we're like, oh my gosh, why am I breathing so hard and so fast? Because you start to only breathe through the top part of your lungs. Instead of stopping for a second, remind yourself to breathe and fill up your entire lungs. Now you actually have oxygen for your muscles. And then part of that is when you're doing a big set, if you focus on your breathing, you can actually calm yourself down. If you just focus on inhale and exhale, your mind and your body will follow quite a lot faster than you might think it will. That takes practice, but that is super powerful, especially after a workout. All right, so we'll talk about that in just a second. So I want you to sit back up tall, both hands face up on your knees. Heels are in the floor. I want you to feel grounded. Sit up tall, close your eyes. This time we're filling your entire lungs. You're going to inhale through your nose, start at your belly, through your ribs to your collarbone. I want you to take a normal inhale, normal exhale. Exhale all your air out. And we're going to inhale for one, two, three, four. Hold. Exhale, two, three, four, hold. Squeeze all of that air out. Inhale, two, three, four, hold. Exhale, all of it out. Squeeze your belly in tight. Get ready for that next breath. Inhale through your belly, up into your ribs, up into your collarbone, four, hold. Exhale, two, three, four, hold. Last one. Inhale, two, three, four, hold, and exhale, two, three, four. Breathe normal. All right? How many of you guys, when you finish a workout, lay down on the floor? Right? Not only is that really bad for your heart, but you've now given up. You have let, you let the workout win, right? Now, sometimes when you push yourself super, super hard, you don't want to stand up. But I would argue that you are better than that and you are bigger than that. No matter how hard you push, you can always crawl. If you move in some capacity, right, it gets me so bad when people just collapse at the floor. That is a defeat. That is a position of defeat. Crawl, move in some capacity towards the door, towards the fan, because eventually if you start moving, right, you're acting into that motivation of now recovery, right? Move towards the door on your hands and your knees so you can slowly put a foot up, so you can slowly walk outside, slowly stand up tall, get there in some capacity. You are moving, even if it's slowly, closer to recovery than you are just laying on the floor, right? How many of you have, yeah, that's why we tell you to walk. That's why we tell you to walk outside, get a breath of fresh air, start breathing. That's why I tell you guys to put your hands out so you can open your chest. Do that victory pose. After you work out, walk outside, open up your diaphragm, like be open to it because then your body will start to recover. That's a sign of a true athlete is how quickly can you recover after your workout, right? How many of you guys have done Tabata Airdyne, walked outside for a minute and come back in and felt like, all right, that's cool, feel good now. Practice. 
practice walking outside and breathing because it can happen, absolutely. After Fran, if you walk outside for a minute, shake your arms out, focus on your breathing. Like you go from zero to normal relatively quickly just by focusing on inhale, exhale, right? Okay, it is 11.03. I'm sorry I went over by three minutes. Um, I'm going to hang out here. Does anybody have any questions? No? Zero questions? You feel kind of relaxed now after the breathing exercise? Yeah. One thing I want to say, and it goes to what Wag said. Uh-huh. You know, when you said, oh, this may sound kind of stupid, I think yeah. there's a culture of trying to identify with and relate to the other athletes. Absolutely. Where you say, oh, man, this is going to be a bitch in the workout, or, you know, oh, that was so hard. It's, yep. uh, it's how do you get us as a collective group, individual, well, individually and as a group, to start to embrace some of those things that you said? Right now, today, like by you guys practicing, and in particular with the with the mantra, right? Start practicing internally, but start doing that externally. And there is a level of vulnerability in that accountability, like I was mentioning earlier. If you approach somebody, it's always a lot easier for them to hear what you're saying if you focus on how you felt, right? So if, if somebody says something like, "Don't put the bar down," just go up to them afterwards and be like, "This is how I felt. This is what I heard." Like it would really help me out in the future. Like, I want to hear your voice. I want your support. Tell me to do this, right? Or at the end, if they say, oh, man, that was super hard, be like, try to turn their perspective a little bit. Be like, yeah, but you showed up, man. You crushed it. Like, what did you do right? Start asking them questions that you're asking yourself. Yeah, right? Um, when I was in college, my roommates and I did this, but we had a no complaining challenge. Because so mm-hmm. often, like, just how we relate to one another, we forget, like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah. Complain this thing. And then it's, it's like the only thing you talk about is, you know, bitch and moan about something. But so instead, like this, what I've found is I've started like, oh, man, front squat. Like my weakness. And I start going into my, I'm weak at this, and yada, yada, yada. And I start putting this down, and I verbalize it, and it ruins the atmosphere, right? Instead, like, what do I think is fun? Okay. Or this is an opportunity yeah. to be to get better at front squats right now. Yeah. Even if it's a one rep max day, and maybe you're not feeling a one rep max, like, again, not every day has to be a testing day. You can talk to the coach and be like, hey, I really want to work on, like, my form with the front squat, so I'm going to stay at 70%, and I'm going to, like, help me make it look perfect. Like, let that be an opportunity for you to push. You can act as a conversation, conversation with all of us, absolutely. Just, just verbalizing, this is going to be fun, as opposed yeah. to this is going to suck. Yep. Like, it's an action over. Kind of action into motivation and kind of faking it until you actually feel it, right? Kind of that same concept. Yeah. Okay. I grew up, I guess I grew up in a culture or community where, like, I was motivated, I think, by negative, by the negative talk, I guess, is, is kind of where you come from. Like, especially football, wrestling, it's like, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, but it's, when people doubt you, you feel that need to prove them wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So, like, yeah. again, not within the external, like, I don't want, I mean, Freddie maybe, but I, I don't want to, <laughs> Freddie maybe, but, like, I don't want to go up to in a class and, like, yell at somebody that they're not going to be able to do this. Like, that kind of, that kind of kills our community, yeah. that kills our community yeah. vibe a little bit. Yeah. But in terms of, like, self-talk, I, I guess I just kind of wonder, like, maybe how you can it. use that motivation and where that line is before you're yes. like, being negative versus motivating yourself kind of through doubt. It's, it's being aware of the times when afterwards... Did you feel emotion attached to it? Like, did you beat yourself up afterwards? Or afterwards were you like, man, thanks, that really pushed me, right? Just being aware of that. And kind of, cause that's going to be a different line for different people. I'm the exact same way. If somebody comes up to me and says, you're doing a good job, that makes me want to stop. I'm like, cool, I did a good job. I can be, I'm done, I'm done, right? As opposed to, like, um, different coaches coming up and being like, you could work faster than that. And being like, yeah, I can, you're right. Because I don't want somebody to be disappointed in me. But there's also this level, like, you start to tell yourself, I am faster than this. I can be faster than this. So it kind of depends because there are absolutely people that are not motivated by that and they're motivated by the positive reinforcement. That's a communication of, like, say in the open, if you have a judge, I tell that person, like, this is what I need you to tell me and this is how I need you to communicate to me so that I can perform my best. It's just communicating to the people around you. It's being aware that everybody's a little bit different um, and that that's okay. That's okay. And it takes a little bit of time, absolutely. But, yeah, we foster positivity like that is what we want for most people when they hear something like that they're going to counter in their head I can do this like if somebody says oh you're going to stop you're going to get slow like you're automatically changing that into your head to something that's pushing you further that turned into a positive 
phrase for you, right? As, as, and I mean, I don't mean like, oh, positive, like happy day, like I can do this. That is a positive statement, right? What well, were you going to say? Or, or instead of saying, I want to prove them wrong, being like, I'm going to do this, yeah. right? That's so much more looking, finite. So when you're looking at the yeah. bar, come on, bro, prove it. Like, it's your one rep But if you, know, if you know that that motivates you, you know from experience, from practice, that's something you can communicate to people. Now, I totally understand what you're saying. Like, like we have that sign that says it's not supposed to be easy, right? People come in and they're like, oh, man, this workout's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. Yes, I completely agree. I think that there's other things we can be saying to each other, and there's, we're trying to kind of make that paradigm shift away from that typical CrossFit feeling. That starts with us. That starts with every individual in here right now. And being open to being vulnerable and asking, like, hey, how can I help motivate you? What do you respond to the most? And if you're not comfortable doing what works for them, it's okay to be like, I'm not, I don't really feel I'm not the person to yell at you, right? Or, like, I would prefer to motivate you this way, so maybe I shouldn't be your judge, or maybe like somebody else can work out next to you. Or, and you might not realize, there have been plenty of instances where I feel like I'm trying to encourage somebody, and I just feel like they're not hearing me, and not hearing me, and then two, three years later, I find out that everything I said to them hit home. But you don't see that, right? And that is up to you to keep choosing to do it anyway. Because you don't know if it's impacting somebody, but you don't know that it's not, right? So keep doing what works for you, and you're going to absolutely affect people around you. Absolutely. Say what? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, ask questions to the coach beforehand. Figure out what's in line with your bigger goals. Absolutely. And then ask questions to the, your peers, too, not just to the coach. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think what I do now is I look at the, I'll look at what the workout is. Like, I hate that. I know that I'm not good at it. I'm, my endurance is not very good. It's a challenge. So, it, it's a challenge. So it's an, a, it's an appropriate time, challenge for I you make, to... Yeah, so I make sure opportunity. I come to those. Yeah, yeah. I make sure yeah. I'm going to come in and, and not that defeat This is me. huge for that, then. Like, this is where... It, exactly. Like, you recognize this is something that challenges me. This is an opportunity for me to be better. And you've already done a great first step of choosing to show up on the workouts where there's running. Now we can take that even further. We can get you to the point where you like running, where you love running, where you feel powerful running. Seriously. Like, this will help. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Yeah. You still made progress. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For us, like, part of that celebrate every victory, that doesn't mean PR is, like, maybe a victory was just showing up. No matter what you did, maybe you just showed up. Maybe you showed up three times that week, and that was, what, that was your victory. There are plenty of times you'll hear us coaches say, that was a great miss, right? You went for a snatch, you didn't quite hit it, but it looked like it was getting better, right? Your form was improving. It was a good miss, and the more you make that miss look better and better and better, one day it's going to be a hit. Yeah, you got lower under the bar, or your form got a little better, absolutely. Thank you guys for coming on Saturday morning. I appreciate that.